I don't know what I'm talking about again, as usual. Hello everyone, I'm Leader of Luxnack. Welcome back to more or less play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. In the last episode, we conquered Mount Horn and reached the base camp at the beginning of the foggy forest, and Shanks found a mysterious red stone. Uh, between the time I filmed the last episode and the time I'm filming this episode right now, I did a bit of off-screen leveling. Is my game volume all the way up? I don't know. Okay. Infernape is now level 16. And Shinx is now level 16. Also, Infernape learned the move Fury Swipes, which is pretty powerful, providing you get enough... Pretty powerful at this point in the game, I should say. Providing it hits more than one or two times, because it attacks only two or five. Fury Swipes is one of those moves that attacks two to five times in a turn, instead of once. That's pretty much it. And now, something helps you build on... So the story that's actually going on when you're around here, if you talk to Chad out here, he'll say Wigglytuff has wandered off into the forest. This is going to strangely be important later. After the first time where Chad's like, Ah, you didn't get anything, you're all dumb and stuff. Only Shinx is that anyway. But, after that, clearing the forest path, you'll just appear right next to the Kangaskhan Rock. So this time, let's roll into the foggy forest. And, by the way, your partner will find the red stone and stuff, no matter which one you chose. And in the foggy forest, every single floor, and all 11 of them, have fog weather. Electric type move power is halved. So going straight in, Shinx moves, turn off your spark. So you always do full damage. And, uh, is that a max licks or a right, max elixir? Yeah, I didn't want... I'm not sure if Mix Elixirs are in this dungeon. I'm not planning on saying all the items that you can find in a dungeon. I might do uh, traps once we start seeing them. But definitely not the items, because there are way too many items in these dungeons. Give me money. Actually, can't wait to come and actually recruit stuff in here because we can get some pretty good team members. Alright, dungeon's actually taking some amount of time. This is kind of cool. So, Foggy Forest, 11 floors. On all four floors, expect to find Zigzagoon, Pachirisu, and Skiploom. On floors 1 through 5, expect to find Cherubi. Hoot Hoot, Smeargle, and Dunsparce. From 6 on, you'll find Stantler, Noctowl, the evolved form of Hoot Hoot. Much more powerful, but also, like, four times harder to recruit. And I hate it when it does that. I don't even know why. There must be something wrong with 3DS. And Veneri, and from 7 onward, Pinsir and Breloom. This is mainly a forest-style dungeon, where you'll find, like, Grass, some normal types that are supposed to be animals that live in a forest, that kind of thing. So, it doesn't hurt that much that, um, no gummy. It's useful. Shinx can't use his electric moves. Got another gummy. Smeargle, they can use, the only move they usually use is Sketch which copies the last move used against them, and they'll know that move instead of their normal move. Uh, players of the normal games will... Oh, that was... Like I said before, when you're paralyzed, you can... Yeah. In Dunsparce, they have some ability, I think it's Runaway, their ability, that when they lose like half their HP, they become frightened and flee. <coughs> Ah, allergies. Also, um, 
something I never mentioned. If a Pokemon has two abilities and would normally have one of the two in the normal games, it will use both of them in these games. Stun Seed. Picked up a few XI Seeds. Uh, there's only one boss battle while you're on the expedition. And this comes in the dungeon after this. Yep, Foggy Forest is not the last dungeon of the expedition. And also, I guess while I'm going through here, I'll do a bit of an update on the way things are standing on my account. Y'all know. Y'all, really. You all know by. Why not? Oh. You all know by now that I'm still just the beginning up here and don't really know much about what I'm doing. So, that's why I just used one picture as my channel background, one picture as my, and cropped it for my profile image. Once chapter 10 begins, yeah, Knocked Owl are the strongest foes in the dungeon. 50 to 51 HP, they're level 14, even though Pinsir and Gorilla the, pretty much anything else on the other floors gets up to 16. Knocked Owl have some of the higher stats, and definitely the most devastating move in the dungeon, Sky Attack. Which does take a turn to charge up. Uh, TM Vacuum Cut. Yes, TMs are in this game. It follows the Sinnoh TMs, like I said before. It also has two new ones, Vacuum Cut and Wide Slash. Wide Slash is pretty much Slash, except for the normal critical hit rate, and it hits everybody in a three square radius around the user. Vacuum Cut is much more useless, because though it affects all enemies in the same room, like a lot of those, it does a fixed 18 points of damage to them. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Once chapter 10 begins, I'm going to begin working on a different channel background that does the story of this game more, and some sort of Team Lux and Ape style profile picture. I might keep the, uh, might actually ask Chug Conroy for his permission to do thing that he does, like change the profile picture every LP. I might just do that and keep with the epic and front picture. That's a really cool looking picture. One of the coolest official pictures for a game. Much better than the... I don't know why, but I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I know someone who could do a perfect iris in it. Okay, apparently in front became in love with a... Mel Pachirisu, okay. I don't know, and like I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted, I know somebody who can do a perfect iris imitation. It's kind of scary. Oh yeah, when you're... Great, set move can't be used. So I'll show off Fury Swipe. As you can see, it misses a lot, but look at how much damage it did to Equipment! Is that a power bank? Wait. And a fence scarf. Um, try giving my power band to Inferno. See? Let's try to boost Fury Swipes. And if I find a TM I'm looking for in the next dungeon, two play. Oh, yeah. Two playthroughs in a row, I think I'm lucky. You do not have to eat an apple or anything in order to replenish Lost Belly. When your belly hits zero, you'll lose one HP every turn, in addition to any damage you take. Any item you can eat restores belly to some extent, so I'm just going to use a gummy. And I just... What IQ skill did I get? I think I got... I don't know which one I got. Course checker? Status checker? I think it was status checker. And I'm getting normally hungry again. Great. 
C, please be erotic. Stun. Weeps. And Shanks, of course, levels up again. Let's see what his new move is. A bite better than charge. Yes, I want to forget. Yeah, stop being so conceited about the fact that you level up so darn quicker than I do. I always forget that when you get a new move, it's already automatically checked on. And the last floor of the dungeon. Um, lucky this dungeon didn't take too long, because there are some really long cutscenes that come on right... Excuse me, Mr. Raccoon Man. Oh, raccoon. Thing. Trying to see. Yeah, Shanks just. Okay, that's what Seismic Toss looks like. So probably some of the best. Where's the exit? That was some jerkish floor design. That was some really jerkish floor design. And that's the first time I picked up a warp seed. And just warp stuff. So I'm going to swap this max elixir with my new warp seed. And get out of here before I die of hunger. And you should get in. You don't even get it. That is... Very jerkish. You don't even get an infield save here. Oh yeah. Chat out saying you have to raise the fog. Was more subtle foreshadowing. Once the fog is gone, hopefully all these orange bends across the screen should stop. It's incredible, the water is coming down and waterfalls all over the place. But where are we? Is this the deepest part of the forest? Doesn't look much like a forest, there's like no trees. Hmm, the fog is so thick, I can't tell which way we can go. Hey, hey, hey! And it is Corfish! Looks like he managed to make it through the foggy forest alone. Didn't know this guy was so much of a trooper. Cough, Steve, cough. And through with all those grass types. And speaking of Steve, a couple days after I recorded the video where I first said that I got the 3DS and was using it to record, well, am using it to record, I opened my pack of... Augmented reality cards. Call me new Perofits and Chugga Conroy so much, but the last one I looked at, it is a family portrait of Steve. Yes, it is also the wallpaper on my phone. The original one was a drawing of Infernape I had, but that was originally going to be my channel background, but uh, it wouldn't work very good as sidebars because the whole epic part would be covered by stuff, so... Hey, hey, you two find any clues? No, nothing yet. About you? How about you, Corfish? Got nothing here, either. Don't let it get you down. But there is something here that's kind of interesting. Interesting? Here, have a look for yourself. I'm real too thirsty right now. I had a milkshake from BK just like 10 minutes before I started recording this, and I'm thirsty again. So I'm not going to do the voice for Corfish. Hmm? What? What is this? I don't know. It seems to be a statue of a Pokemon. What kind of Pokemon is that? Never seen a Pokemon like that before. Oh, is there is something inscribed here? Run over. And on the top screen, you see... Oh my god, plot twist, it's the Chapter 8 background! It's in footprint runes. Let me read it. So yes, apparently, the whole game has been translated into English. They really speak in footprint runes. Either that, or footprint runes are the, or they speak in English and apparently write in English. And footprint runes are the ancient language that your partner somehow knows a lot about. I'm going with option one, because I can't think of Shinx knowing... I can't just... I just can't imagine Shinx knowing something like this. It's in Footprint Runes. Let me read it. Um, okay, I guess he does... This is some ancient language that they know. Huh. Imagine Shinx knowing something like that. 
Reignite the life that burned within Groudon, for the sky shall blaze with the sun's heat. The path to treasure shall be revealed. That sounds cool. The path to treasure? That's incredible. And I'm going to cough again, stupid allergies. <coughs> Did feel better, though. Oh, Infernape. Treasure? Could this mean the treasure of Fogbound Lake? No! We're in the fog, and there's water that could be coming from a lake. No! We're talking about Death Mountain from half the Zelda games for the N60. What am I talking about? Well, at least I got something right about Death Mountain being from a Zelda game. As in Ocarina of Time and Four Swords. I'm not sure about any other ones, because I don't play that much Zelda, even though I probably should a lot more. So this means the secret to finding Fogbound Lake could be hidden right here. Hey, 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 you think so? Hey, now that's a mystery we've got to solve. Part of the footprint runes. Part about life that burned within Groudon. What's this about? So this Groudon is this, air quote, is this, is it this, this statue? I can't talk again. So, yeah, if you're a long-time Pokemon player, you already know that is a Groudon. Or the incarnation of Groudon in this Pokemon universe. Hey, hey, so we're supposed to what? Ignite the life that was in the statue? Yeah, but ignite the life? How do we do that? Hmm. Huh? Wait a second. I know. Touch the statue, Infernape. Maybe you'll see something, Infernape. Dots. I was thinking that too. If it means finding a path to Fogman Lake. It means finding the key to my own past. The answers are held by this statue. Let's do this. It's time to take to the skies. It sounds like a good quote. Too bad it's not relevant for any of the games. Or it would be my... Too bad it's, like, not relevant for this game and only slightly relevant for the game I'm planning on doing my second LP of. So, it's not going to be my channel title. Even though I think, personally, it sounds really cool. Fortnite touched the statue of Groudon. Feeling anything in Fortnite? Oh my god, right... And I just passed in front of my camera. It's coming. What is this? Toy Store episode of Spud? The <laughs> bars on the screen are even worse by the dizzy thing. That dizzy feeling. My camera is not focusing at all on that, is it? That's it. It's here. It's here. That was pathetic. W what was that? Whose voice was that? And you're having another one immediately? It's so soon after the first one. I see. Place the drought zone in Groudon's heart. That lifts the fog. Very well done. Good job, partner. Hmm, partner. I'm already an explorer with a partner. Maybe I had a partner before. Maybe this has something to do with my past. What did I just pick up on? That was different from what I've gotten before. That time, of course, I saw something again. This time I only heard a voice, and I don't know whose voice that was. That voice. Whose voice was that? I didn't even get a sense of what the voice really sounds like. It still bugs me for some reason. Maybe it sounds familiar. Maybe that was a voice from someone from my past. Who knows? What did that voice say? Remember? The voice said, To place the drought stone in Groudon's heart. Then said, That lifts the fog. Wait a second. Drought stone? Is that maybe? Unauthorized use of flashbacks within this game. Something. And it's just showing your partner finding the stone thing again. Could the drought stone be? Maybe it's the stone Chinx found. Oh, here, there's a small hollow in the statue's chest. Can you figure something out in front of it? Does the running telling? What? That stone I found at the base camp. You want me to fit that stone into this statue's chest? Nice job sounding totally normal. Sure, I'll try it. I should put it into this indentation. Nice job sounding normal again. She just placed the strange stone in the statue's stone chest. 
and the eye starts flickering. Eh, it's gonna come alive and start attacking us. I guess it's a good thing to have a water type since Groudon's a ground type. And we're both weak against Groudon. Step back, everyone. Uh, looks like it exploded. Guess we're not gonna have to fight Groudon. I guess it would be a cool boss battle. And... Oh my god, the orange bars have finally diminished! The fog has been lifted! It is a new day, and if you look at the top screen, it is time to take to the skies! Eh, maybe that should be my channel title anyway. Hey, hey, the fog is gone, the sky clear, the sunlight's harsh. <laughs> I like that animation of Shanks looking up. I don't know. What is up being an idiot? I guess Shanks is some, in some way cute. Hey, look. Both of you, up, look up! Hey, hey, what is that? It's what the fog was hiding. And this song is called Time Gear Remix. More subtle foreshadowing. It's no wonder Fogbound Lake evaded discovery for all this time. We were just wandering around in circles, too. Hey, hey, so you're saying? You're saying Fogbound Lake is up there? Hey, hey, hey? Yes, that's what I think. Fogbound Lake has to be up there. And then... Really amazing graphics for the DS, actually. I mean, I'd love to see Explorers of Sky 3D just so I could see that on the top screen in 3D. Probably some of the best graphics in the game. If not, probably some of the best graphics in any Mystery Dungeon game, actually. Infield save. Take it. And next time, prepare to see the title screen once again.